Hello, welcome to today's episode of the Laundromat Millionaire Show. Today, we're going to be talking about a hot topic, wash, dry, fold, and an often debated issue of how to measure and how to charge prices. Do you charge by the back or by the pound? Make sure you listen. There will be plenty to learn. Hey everyone, Dave Menz back for another episode of the Laundromat Millionaire Show, and we are about halfway through our third season. I'm here today with my beautiful wife, Carla, and we're going to dive a little bit deeper. You know, a lot of the subjects that we do, we kind of take on the macro approach just because we're limited on time and with a podcast and things like that. In this episode, we're going to dive a little bit deeper, and we're going to go kind of niche within a niche, if you will. Uh, in this episode, what we're going to talk about is wash, dry, fold. Uh, you can, it applies to pickup and delivery or dry drop-off service, but we're going to talk about pricing and specifically whether to price by the bag or by the pound and why our industry has done the things that they've done over the last 70 years or so, because our industry has quite a bit of a track record of doing drop-off laundry, pickup and delivery to a certain extent is a little bit newer thing. Uh, but we're going to jump right into it. You ready for that? Yeah. Uh, first, I think to give you some background, we have tried both. We have done by the bag. We have done by the pound. Yeah. Um, Dave also has coached a lot of different clients that have tried both. Um, so just a little background there. So we're speaking from experience here. Yeah, and we've not only tried both here in Cincinnati, as Carla mentioned, but having coached a couple hundred clients at this point over the last five or six years, we've coached clients when we were coaching just pick up and, or I'm sorry, just drop off laundry, uh, how to start and scale a drop off laundry service before we even really did pick up and delivery. Uh, we had kind of cracked that code. Then once we went into pick up and delivery, I got a little uh, tempted at different points to be like, hey, maybe pick up and delivery is a little bit different, so we'll try it here. And through these different clients, I've had many clients come to me and they're like, hey, this is why I think I should try it. And I'm always encouraging my clients, hey, this is my experience. This is the experience of some of our other coaching clients. But hey, maybe your market's different. Maybe your market's unique. Let's take a look at this and let's give it a shot. And the, so we're going to share all of that information with you today, not just, hey, this is what we do in Cincinnati. This is all we've ever done. This is why it's better than anything else. We try to be what we call abundance mindset thinkers. And so we're, we're not under the impression that we are the authority, uh, but we definitely have a lot of experience. And so we didn't just wake up one day with these opinions and ideas. They're very well thought out. They're very well researched. Uh, and so we want to share this information with you to help you scale your business faster and help you from you know wasting some of your time that we wasted in the past. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Uh, first of all, you've decided to enter this fascinating world of wash dry fold, but you're not sure how to set your prices um, or or let's say, for example, you are sure how to set your prices, and maybe you've never tried anything else. So I'm a big fan of challenging the status quo. Maybe you're even intrigued by what we call buy-the-bag models. And I get it. Trust me, I have been there. I have been tempted by that. Um, and like I said, we're going to share a little bit of what we learned through all of our coaching clients and our operations here in Cincinnati. What it really boils down to is the buy-the-bag model. When it comes to pricing, it seems like it's easier and less confusing for the customer. And I'm going to be honest with you, it is. Well, even not just for the customer, but it's honestly simpler for the attendant too. It is. I mean, you don't have to weigh anything. It's like, here's the bag, here's your charge. And, you know, customers know exactly what they're going to have to pay. Yeah. So we get the attraction to it. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've been guilty of that attraction um, at different points. And so we're going to dive into, you know, this industry has been around for roughly 70 years. Why has this industry clearly chosen a winner? Because we have, as an industry, we have clearly chosen a winner. That's why I always find it interesting when new investors and new entrepreneurs come into our industry and they Im immediately are uh, perplexed by the idea that we charge by the pound mm -hmm. when it's so confusing to the consumer and it's even confusing to you. It involves more work as far as weighing everything. Uh, and so we're going to kind of dive into the time-tested uh, reasons of why our industry does what we do and the things that we've learned along the journey. And the industry most of the industry chooses by the pound. Mm -hmm. 
So why is that? Yeah, I mean, I don't have uh, you know hard data. I just have anecdotal numbers. But I can tell you just from casual ob- observation of someone who's kind of obsessed with our industry and networking and meeting other laundromat owners, I don't think it's crazy to think it's as high as 90 to 95 percent of our industry chooses mm-hmm. by the pound. And there must be a reason for that. It's not just because that's what we've always done. So I always find it interesting. You know, we love new people coming into the industry because they do challenge the status mm-hmm. quo. Uh, but I always find it interesting when I talk to someone new coming into the industry as if typically in their mind, it's like, hey, I have this really cool idea. And it's like as if that's never been tried before. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyway, let's jump into it because at the end of the day, we're not here to be right. We're just here to share our observations, our information. And by all means, down in the chat, if you're on YouTube or something like that, share your experiences, share your Mm -hmm. comments. If you're on a Facebook group, share this video and let's have a conversation about that in the different groups and see what that looks like. Because once again, as we believe we're all better together, Mm -hmm. this isn't about us being right. It's just about us challenging the status quo to see if we can do better. Okay, so the industry seems to side with by the pound. So what what would the advantages be, though, for by the bag? I mean, it definitely seems more simple. You don't have to worry about investing in a scale. Mm -hmm. Um, A person knows what they're going to be charged when they walk in. So it must be, is there something with the profitability of it? Why is by the bag Um, not good long term? Well, the main reason it's not is it, it, the, the main reason that we have learned through our coaching clients and ourselves that buy the bag is not the best way to go is simply because we don't feel it's the fairest. Mm-hmm. Um, customers don't like to be nickel and dime. They don't like it when we add surcharges here and surcharges there and different things like that. Uh, they do like simplistic pricing. But mm-hmm. what they also like is what's fair. Because what we learned in our experience, and we found this to be the case across the board, is that by the bag pricing, while it is a good business model, you don't have to weigh laundry, the customer doesn't have to guess, all these different things, the problem is it lacks fairness. And what's really interesting about what we've learned in this journey is that it lacks lacks fairness for both the owner and the customer. When we were doing buy-the-bag pricing, and this this pretty much applies to all of our, cl- our coaching clients as well, um, across the board, which we find interesting in and of itself, is that we lost money on about 25 to 30 percent of the orders. Mm-hmm. Um, I've even talked to other operators and other franchises that have similar buy-the-bag models, and they will, you know, I don't know if they will publicly, (laughs) but privately, uh, have conversations with them, and they'll fully admit that, yeah, about 25 to 30 percent of our orders, uh, we lose money on. Is that just because because if it's just a bag, the customers just stuff it so full, so they're Mm -hmm. getting a lot more for their money, and then you're obviously— decreasing your profit margin there? Yeah, there's kind of a couple trains of thought, if you will. One of them is that when consumer behavior, if they know they're going to pay the same price by the bag, mm-hmm. then they're they're going to cram the bag full. Yeah. Um, that's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is there are some consumers that aren't necessarily as price conscious. Mm-hmm. And so if the bag isn't full, they're going to go ahead and send it in. But what we've learned by talking to those customers is that while they did do that and they didn't know that it was a buy-the-bag pricing, it just didn't feel fair to them. Yeah. It just didn't seem right that they would pay the same price for a half full bag as mm-hmm. a completely full bag. And they weren't price sensitive enough to want to wait. They were mm-hmm. more interested in the level of service they received. Um, so it was really interesting as we called and emailed these different customers and asked questions and took data polls and things like that with them. It was really interesting to me that they went ahead and sent it in. They knew what they were mm-hmm. paying but it just didn't sit right with them. Yeah. And well, and two, it would incentivize that customer. You know, a lot of other customers, maybe at first, you're making good profit margins on them because they're filling in their, they're sending their bags in not overly full, mm-hmm. but they're basically being incentivized to hold that bag longer till it is extra full. Mm-hmm. And then you're losing money on that. So I, I wonder, I know we didn't stick with buy the bag very long because mm-hmm. we didn't like the fairness feeling yeah. and, you know, losing money on part of them and all that. But I wonder if we had stuck with it even longer, if we would have seen our profit margins over time slipping and slipping and slipping as people kept only sending in overstuffed bags. Yeah, I think there's two sides of the equation here. And one of them is what you're describing, which is they're just going to wait. And then the other side of the equation is that they do it because it feels uh, it feels like a better value financially for their mm-hmm. money. But they're also annoyed that they have to do it. And mm-hmm. so what we found happened sometimes is they understood that was the model. They understood that's what they were paying, but it changed their consumer behavior. Mm-hmm. So they didn't call. They didn't complain until we reached out to them. But what they did do 
is go use another service that was, guess what, by the pound. Hmm. Because it just felt fairer to them. And they didn't want it. What they told us is they didn't want to have to think about it. Mm -hmm. If they sent in a half full bag of laundry, they felt like they should pay for a half full bag of laundry. And if it was $50 for a you know 40-pound bag of laundry, hypothetically, and they sent in half of a bag, they felt like it should be $25. Mm -hmm. Well, then what do you do? Do you break it down by 10% of the bag or 20% of the bag? Mm -hmm. um, but I do have, okay, so this might be a stupid question, yeah. but for buy the bag pricing, all the people that do buy the bag pricing out there, I know there's not very many, but doesn't that mean you have to have the same bag? Like if a drop-off customer wants to bring stuff in their own bag, mm -hmm. that could be a big bag or a little bag. Yeah. Like, so if, if someone's charging just by the bag for drop-off, I know pickup and delivery, we give them bags, but a lot of drop-offs don't give them a bag necessarily, right? Mm -hmm. So do they dump it in one of their bags yeah. and then count? how many of their bags it fills? Yeah. I mean, obviously, everyone's a little bit different. We all know that. So if you're a buy-the-bag person and we're not describing your business model, then by all means, don't attack us. <laughs> um, but, but And I'm clueless. I don't know. I'm just asking. No, you're absolutely right. Most of the buy-the-bag proponents, what they'll do is have anywhere from two to five different size bags. And so there's a charge based on the size of the bag. Correct. So like if you if you bring in a bag, then they say, oh, this is about the size of this bag, so you'll be charged this much. Well, they'll actually they'll actually tell you, here's one bag, here's another bag, here's another bag. This is ten. This is twenty. This is thirty. Here, see if it'll fit in this bag. Oh, oh wow! Fit in that so bag. That take it out. Okay, put it in this bag. It fits in that bag. Which oh. for a drop off service for an over the counter service. You know, it, it's a little wonky because yeah. we all know drop-off customers come in and they're very time sensitive. They don't even wait for us to print them a receipt sometimes, mm -hmm. but they have to do that. And of course, if they have the bags at home, then that's a that's something that's easily overcome. The flip side is also true, though. When it comes to pickup and delivery, it becomes much more of an issue mm -hmm. because with pickup and delivery, okay, I have this size bag and it's fifty dollars. I know you have a bag half this size and I have that much laundry, but I don't have the right size bag, so yeah. I'll send it in this bag. Okay. Will you swap it to this bag and only charge me for that bag's price? Yeah. Regardless of how you run your business, the fact of trying to communicate these things to the customers mm -hmm. and the confusion of them, it, it's very confusing. So uh, that almost, I feel like that would almost get rid of the whole like bonus of buy the bag is that it's simple mm -hmm. and you don't have that extra task of weighing it. But if you have this extra task of figuring out which size bag it matches up to. And whether I have that bag. Yeah, the, that yeah. kind of defeats the whole well, Bonus I mean, subject. once again, I mean, I think, I think, <laughs> Sorry. I, I think we would both fully admit, and I think pretty much everyone in the industry would fully admit, there's pros and cons to both. Mm -hmm. uh, more important than anything else is that that the buy the or the buy the pound pricing was while while it is a little flawed in the sense of uh, yes, it's fair, but it's not as simple to understand. Mm -hmm. The buy the pound pricing is not only the most fair way to approach it. But it, it actually is easily overcomable. We were trying to overcome the obstacle of who knows what a pound of laundry is and what does that even mean and why does this mm -hmm. weigh more than that even though this is full? And, you know, <laughs> I mean, you could literally have a 40-pound bag of laundry that doesn't weigh 40 pounds. It weighs 20 pounds because mm -hmm. it's light T-shirts or a comforter or something like that. And mm -hmm. you could have a 40-pound bag of laundry that's completely full. That Stuff weighs, with jeans. That's right. That weighs 50 <laughs> pounds in some cases. Um, and it, it, it confused the customer but what we learned is it was easily overcomable. There's nothing better than free. Ever heard that before? Well, it's not true. You know what your laundromat customers like even better than free? It's fast. That's right. They want to save time more than they want to save money in most cases. They want to get in and out of your laundromat as fast as possible and they'll pay more for that experience. We're proof of that here in Cincinnati. That's why we added HM Company drain troughs into our newest store in Cincinnati. While they may never know why, your customers will love that your washers all drain better and faster than with old school drain pipes. As if that wasn't enough, every HM drain trough is made in the USA, so they ship in only a few weeks and everyone is custom made just for you and your project. If you want to provide your customers with a top-of-the-industry experience in your store, 
Then contact your distributor to order your HM Company drain trough today or visit draintroughs.com. I mean, another example is from an operating perspective, when we bring laundry into the store, like we'll, for pickup and delivery, we might bring in 50 to 100 pounds, or I'm sorry, 50 to 100 orders per day yeah. for pickup and delivery. Well, we have to weigh all of that. Mm -hmm. And so one of the the uh, proponents, some of the proponents of buy the bag pricing say, hey, you have to spend all this time and weighing the bags um, and putting those poundage into the system and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's time that we save. And yeah. so one of the things I thought you all would found interesting is we picked a day. Mm -hmm. we, I picked a day uh, about six months ago. It was one of our middle, middle of the road volume days. Um, and what I did is I checked in and we had 78 orders mm -hmm. and I had our team track. How long did it take to weigh and just put a couple digits into the software of each of those bags? And it ended up being about 13 seconds per order. And I think it was about 17 minutes, if I remember right, mm -hmm. for those 78 bags. I'm not sure if the math is exactly right on that, but it was in that ballpark. And so another thing I tell people is once again, not saying either one of these are perfect uh, yeah. by any stretch of the imagination. They both have pros and cons. But is it worth 16 minutes of your time to be fair, to, to provide mm -hmm. a fairer price? Because once again, we not have— Not 16 minutes out of their day, 13 seconds per order. Correct. Yeah. 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 So my point is that a lot of people that are proponents of buy the bag, they also say, well, we don't, you have to do this. We don't have to do this. That makes mm -hmm. us more profitable. And, and there's truth to the fact that they definitely don't have to do that. And mm -hmm. we do. I just wanted to point out to people that it doesn't involve hours and hours of time, even with 78 orders, for example. Mm -hmm. Now, is there systems and processes to do that quickly? Of course, we've honed those things in. So from day one, it might not be the case. Uh, but, you know, 78 orders is, is a decent amount of residential orders for a day mm -hmm. for a lot of operators, especially for drop-off, but for pickup and delivery. Um, and so I just wanted to point out to people, I wanted to actually get some hard data just on mm -hmm. one day and say, okay, is this really an issue? 16 minutes, 13 seconds per order. It's almost a moot point. So talk to them about how we overcame the obstacle of people not understanding what a pound of laundry is. Yeah. So the, the main things we did is a couple of real simple things. One of them is when we had the opportunity to talk to the customers, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's through messaging on social media, uh, frequently asked questions page on our website, things like that. We first just explained what is a pound of laundry? What is that? Mm -hmm. What does that consist of? So what we did is we tried to flip the script and say, okay, what is a load of laundry? Mm -hmm. The average Like a load, load of, you would do in your home. Yeah. Regular sized machine. Yeah. And as a general rule, that's typically 10 to 12 pounds is what we mm -hmm. tell people. So the first thing is when a customer says, well, I don't even know what a pound of laundry is. We say, well, an average load of laundry is typically anywhere from 10 to 12 pounds. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay. I mean, as a mom or a dad, I understand what roughly a load of laundry mm -hmm. is. Sitting you can look at a pile and be like, okay, that's probably three loads or right, whatever. Exactly. And so they would be able to say, okay, if that's roughly 10 pounds and you charge $250 a pound, that's going to cost $25 for that load mm -hmm. of laundry as an example. But if they filled the, belt, the bag half full, then they would know that was a half bag of laundry or, a, or two loads of laundry, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And so they could very easily calculate and figure out roughly – how much that bag of laundry was going to cost them to send in, yeah. whether it was full or not full, whether it was a third full or two thirds full or what have you. There, so there's comparing it to what you know, but they also have the option of they can weigh it at home. Oh, absolutely. I mean, most people have a bathroom scale. And I mean, the only thing is you do have to be careful to tell them that that's an approximate weight yeah. because it's, you know, a home scale obviously is not as precise as ours that have to be calibrated and are checked. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Department of Weights and Measures actually measured our scale and calibrates them to make sure they're billing customers correctly, uh, which is what Carla's referring to. And so, yeah, that's another thing we tell them is, hey, grab a bag of laundry or just a pile of laundry in a basket, subtract the weight of the basket, sit it on a scale. If you're really that price sensitive, that's a rough idea. Mm -hmm. um, but most people don't want to go through that hassle um, either. We found the best way to approach it was just to say, hey, roughly a load of laundry, you know what a load of laundry is, 10 to 12 pounds, multiply that by our per the pound price. And by the way, part of our pricing mm -hmm. strategy that's worked so well well, is the only thing we charge extra for is sales tax. Mm -hmm. That's it. We don't charge extra for premium detergent. We don't charge extra for hangers. We don't charge extra if you want to hang dry. We charge one premium price. And what we do is we advertise next day returns, which is something a lot of laundry services don't provide. We, char we advertise that we do your laundry the way you do it. 
So mm-hmm. it was fully customizable, and we do it that it's all inclusive pricing. Mm-hmm. Those are kind of our three. But you have our, a charge for what extreme soiling or something? Well, heavily soiled. Yeah, heavily I think soiled. Everybody has okay. That. Yeah, uh, but that's you can get some pretty bad stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a one off. But I mean, like to to do the same load of laundry to be used different detergent or all free and clear, mm-hmm. or, uh, hang dry items or like I said, hangers, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the price is the same no matter what, and that's where it actually comes back to the simplicity and pricing that we found to be very valuable. The funny thing is the the buy the bag proponents, which I was one of those at one point, that's what they were going for, right? That's the mm-hmm. mindset is I want to make this a simplistic approach so they know roughly what they're paying. What I find ironic about it is there's a decent amount of people in the industry that do buy the bag pricing mm-hmm. for the simplistic approach. And then they have all these add-ons. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, that kind of is counterintuitive to what you're trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Um, so once again, we're not here to be the authority. We're just here to share information with you um, about, you know, what it looks like. Um, so, so far, everything we've talked about in the debate has been, I feel like, more owner-centered, mm-hmm. like, um, which is easier, which is simpler for us, which takes up less time, um, which one can we be more profitable on? But I think one of the biggest deciding factors for us was the customer perspective, which you did hit on this some with, you know, customers over time are trying to fit more in their bag and that's less profit margins for us. But more importantly, it's those customers that don't fit more in their bag and are coming back not happy with the service, Mm -hmm. not feeling like they got a good deal. Where on the buy the pound, we found customers feel like everything's more fair. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they don't feel like they're getting this super deal by overstuffing their bags, which, by the way, if you're providing, are probably getting ripped because mm-hmm. they're getting overstuffed. Yeah, we had that up. <laughs> um, but they're they're maybe not feeling like, ooh, they got one over on you because they yeah. overstuffed that bag. But everybody feels like they're getting fair treatment. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, once again, I'll say it for probably the hundredth time now, you know, no, no, no system is perfect. I'm not suggesting that one is perfect and the other is not. But we always like to start with what we call the win-win in business. Mm-hmm. We don't, we, we've never, whether it's a lease or an acquisition or hiring an employee or giving a promotion, every aspect of our business, uh, we always want to feel like there's a win-win. I've said it mm-hmm. before. I, we, you know, I sleep really good at night knowing that, yes, we have a great lifestyle and amazing uh, uh, life at this point, so we're financially mm-hmm. secure, and that's great. But if I did that at the expense of someone else, then wouldn't I be more of a predator? Um, mm-hmm. You know, earning money at someone else's expense. And there are business people like that out there. That's just not who we want to be to our core. Yeah. We believe that's who most of our audience doesn't want to be. Um, and not to suggest that buy the bag pricing is predatory. <laughs> that's not what I'm suggesting at all. But what is what is fair? Because we feel like that's the foundation. The foundation of all business should be what is fair and equal. Um, Mm -hmm. The flip side is also true. I understand the customers don't care, but I also equally didn't like the idea that 30% of the orders that came in, we lost money on. Mm -hmm. Now, that didn't seem fair to me, right? Why Mm -hmm. should we do some, you know, Carla Menz's laundry, and why should we lose money on that Mm -hmm. order? Now, from a business perspective, you can back out of that and look at your model as a totality and say, okay, it's fair because we make up for it on these other 70% of the orders. Um, And so I I understand from the macro perspective, it still makes sense. But what I didn't like about that was also the case that these other customers were actually subsidizing the losses from our 30% that lost Mm -hmm. money on this buy the bag pricing. That didn't sit right with me either. Mm-hmm. You know, and once again, if there if there weren't a solution, if there weren't a buy the pound solution, and by the way, whoever came up with this well, eons and- <laughs> ago, good for them because who would have ever thought the way laundry? Right? Yeah. I'm, <laughs> like that's crazy. There's just no perfect solution. Well, the perfect solution would be that you charge based on the amount of time it takes you to process and the amount of water and energy and electricity mm-hmm. and all of that. But we don't know those numbers based on the closest measure would be how much it weighs. That's right. You know, That's exactly right. and even that isn't perfect because maybe you have a big bag, but it's full of baby clothes that are going to take your attendance forever to fold. <laughs> and so yeah. you might still not, not get a normal size profit margin on that bag, mm-hmm. where if another bag is, you know, just full of sheets yep. and pillowcases, you know, mm-hmm. folding takes no time. So it's still not perfect, but I think it's more fair than bag the bat. By the bag. It's more consistently, I guess, in line with the costs associated to process that laundry. The poundage is more in line with that, where you're just using a bag that could be any degree of full isn't in line with the costs associated to process it as well. 
Yeah. Well, you know, we also talk about by the pound, and there is a little bit of speculation there. But with by the pound pricing, that also directly translates to a, to like a 60, 80 pound machine. Mm -hmm. Now, we all know that's not an exact science either. That's kind of a made up number. It's really more of a volume game, if you will. Mm -hmm. How much volume does it take up in that bag? Mm -hmm. How much volume does it take up in that 60 pound washer? Um, but these are things that you kind of find that median and you kind of, you know, accept the fact that that is the fairest you're going to get. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So one of the examples that I like to provide for people um, is obviously we talked about by the bag pricing and how you charge $50 for this bag and $30 for that bag. Um, so I want to give you the other side of the equation. So a customer picks up an order, or I'm sorry, we pick up an order that's 42 pounds from a customer. We charge them for those 42 pounds. Next, a 32-pound order comes in. Same thing, right? We charge them for 32 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's reasonable, fair, and everyone is happy with the value exchange taking place. They are providing X for X value, and it's a fair win-win situation. Mm -hmm. In our opinion, what we've learned over – we've been doing pickup and delivery for six years, but we've been doing drop-off laundry at our stores for – Oh my goodness, eight or nine years at the yeah. time that this is being shot. Um, and it, it just, we feel like it's not only test, stood the test of time for us because we did approach, I mean, we had no ulterior motives. We did approach mm -hmm. this and our coaching clients, you know, I've given them some, some foundational background stuff and said, but go test it out and let's talk about this and let's mm -hmm. talk about what's best for you. But what I really want to get to is the fact that a lot of people doing it by the bag, I want to be very clear. We are not here to suggest that you can't be successful mm -hmm. running a pickup and delivery or a drop-off laundry service pricing by the bag. Mm -hmm. the if numbers, it's working for you, keep doing it. The if your numbers, customers are happy. The numbers do work. Absolutely. What I want to challenge them on is we're here to challenge you to be better tomorrow than you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so a big part of that is, okay, it is working for you. This is not an either or proposition, mm -hmm. but what if the other way would work better and you just haven't given it the chance because you don't want to spend 16 minutes to weigh bags? Yeah. What if what if what you perceive in your mind to be accurate and the fairest way to do this, what if, the, what if you haven't taken the time to call hundreds of customers that no longer use your service to find out why not mm -hmm. because they typically are not going to share that information with you unless you're very proactive about it. And so that's a part of why we wanted to do this episode is we just wanted to share with everyone the things that we've learned from both sides of the aisle, both sides of the equation. Okay, so at the end of the day, we, th we feel like we've shared a lot of information with you. We obviously are proponents of buy the pound pricing <laughs> without question. Uh, one thing I will leave you with while we talked about uh, not, not adding on um, – you know, the, the nickel and dime type of stuff. All the extras. The, the all-inclusive pricing. your pricing, we recommend yeah. too. Yeah, so so listen, we are obviously fans of anyone that is successful in the industry. If you are successful and you love what you do, as Carla mentioned, by all minds, continue doing it. Mm -hmm. The only thing we want to challenge you on is, if anything else, think about your mindset. Think about your mindset. And we don't ever believe that we've arrived. We're mm -hmm. always pushing the envelope, uh, <laughs> much to my operations team's dismay to some point. <laughs> I am always saying what we do today does not reflect what we do tomorrow. I'm yeah. always going to challenge it. And the only reason we're going to continue doing tomorrow what we did today is because today I didn't find a better way to do it. Yes. And at the end of the day, think about your customers. What best serves them? We still think you should be able to make money. Mm -hmm. But if you serve your customer well, then you'll end up winning in the long run. Yeah, the buy the pound pricing. I mean, you're doing yourself and your community a favor. Charge by the pound for your wash dry fold service. We think that this is a tried and true method over mm -hmm. 70 years that the industry has been around doing drop off laundry and doing things the way we did them in the past isn't always the best way to do it in the future. But when you challenge new ways of doing things and they don't end up being better, we think we should never hesitate to revert back to the means um, or to the median and try to find, you know, try to find a better way to do it moving forward, but maybe that test didn't work. We feel like buy the pound pricing is the perfect kind of symbiotic relationship between service and fairness. We think it's an ideal value exchange between you and your customers and your business. And once again, when everyone's winning, everyone's happy, right? Also, don't forget, um, if you're interested in more about Wash, Dry, Fold, mm -hmm. uh, check our website for um, our next uh, pickup and delivery workshop where we will be doing some wash dry fold. Um, also, if you're catching this and it's currently September, uh, CLA also has a wash dry fold thing mm -hmm. coming up in November. Yeah. So there's different 
things that you can check out to maybe get some more knowledge. And we're always looking for more to learn. Yep, absolutely. All right, guys, for Dave and Carla Menz here in Cincinnati, Ohio, we hope if nothing else, this podcast kind of challenged you, challenged the status quo. If it makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable, that's kind of our job. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking to do. We will see you all next time for another episode of the Laundromat Millionaire Show. Take care, everyone. Bye. 